All right, guys, we are going to take a look at the gravimetric analysis of a metal carbonate lab. For us in our AP Chem class, for this one, we are doing this as a dry lab. Um, I'm going to demonstrate parts of the directions to you, the procedure, so you understand the, oops, sorry, the general idea of what's going on. We just don't have enough time to actually perform this lab, and we don't have some of the adequate equipment for every piece of it. So I'm going to walk through some of the procedure. You should have this in your possession so you can walk through it together with me. Um, the first part of the lab has to do, well, the general idea of the lab is that we have a metal carbonate. So this is what our metal carbonate looks like, white powdery substance. And we want to identify what metal carbonate that is. So our metal is um, going to come from our alkali metals, group one. Um, and our carbonates or the carbonate ion is what is combined with it. So you can see in equation one on your sheet, it's um, shown as M2CO3, so M being our metal and then the carbonate ion. Um, so the general idea is we want to know what that metal is. We want to identify it. So the first part of this lab is to actually take the metal carbonate and we need to heat it and make sure that no water is contained within that solid. So lots of solids attract water out of the air and we would have to dry that substance first. So the first part has a setup of a ring stand. So we've got our ring, our ring stand, um, the Bunsen burner, I don't have it hooked up to gas, obviously. Um, and then it has a clay triangle. So this is a triangle made of metal and then clay pieces and this just sits on top. Um, and then it says to place our crucible into the clay triangle. A crucible is a small ceramic container. It can be heated to very high temperatures and allows us to heat different substances. So we want to set that inside our clay triangle. And that's really the job of the clay triangle is to hold the crucible. And it helps to also distribute the heat very well. Then what it has us do, is we would light the Bunsen burner. And then it says to um, brush the bottom of the crucible with the flame. So you'd want to brush it, kind of put it back and forth, and allow our carbonate that's in, or allow the crucible to heat up. And it's just to dry the crucible. At that point, you wouldn't want to touch the crucible anymore. Um, it burns off like your fingerprints and all of those things that can actually affect the mass of it. So we want really exact masses on this. Um, so you would use crucible tongs like these. And you would be able to lift your crucible out of the clay triangle and take it to a balance and put it on the balance. Um, so we'll pretend like it's on our balance here. So we have it there. Um, so we'd find the mass of our empty crucible and that would be entered into our data table. You have your uh, mass of your crucible in your data table already recorded as 10.654 grams. And then we would add our metal carbonate to it. So here's my metal carbonate. Um, we would add it and it says to add approximately two grams. Now this would be on the balance, you'd be weighing this out. And it says approximately, it doesn't have to be exactly 2.0000 grams because you're finding its mass anyway, you just need to have about two grams. Um, so in your data table, you can see the mass of the crucible plus the metal carbonate and it's 12.664. Um, at that point, we would want to, again, using our tongs, even though the crucible is cooled down, we want to use our tongs so we don't touch it and add fingerprints. And we would carefully lift our crucible and place it back onto the clay triangle. Um, we would then repeat the heating. So we would heat our um, crucible, we would heat that metal carbonate and drive off any water that would be contained in that substance because it likes to attract water from the air. Uh, once we've heated it, we would take this off and again, we'd let it cool. We would want to set it on a heat resistant pad. Um, so we'd have a pad there. We'd let it cool for a few minutes. Um, and then we would want to find its mass. Um, we would do that one more time. We would at least, so we would heat this again. Go on, heat, 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 add your flame and then let it cool. And on our heat resistant pad again and then find its mass again. Um, so that would 
get us all the way through step seven in your um, procedure. So the heating steps are necessary to ensure that the crucible is dry and the carbonate samples are anhydrous. So that means it doesn't contain any water, antihydrated basically. Um, so you can see in your data table, you've got the mass of the crucible after it's dried the first time and then after it's dried the second time um, with the metal carbonate. So it does drop 0 0.002 grams, so it's a little bit, so we are losing some of that water there. All right, at that point, we would have that dry sample and we would take, since our, we're not finding the mass of the crucible anymore and it's cooled, we would take our crucible and move some of this other stuff out of our way since we would be done with it. This part, this part. So we take our crucible and we want to add its contents to a 400 milliliter beaker. We want to make sure that all of it came out. So we have it in our beaker here. Um, and then we're going to add about 200 milliliters of deionized water. So we want to dissolve all of that metal carbonate. So in my very large graduate cylinder here, I'm going to add 200 milliliters of water. And again, it says about, here's my 200 milliliter line. It's pretty good. Um, so go ahead. catch my cord here. All right, so we would add our water. It's a pretty significant amount of water. We want to make sure that all of it dissolves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stir that up. Get all of our metal carbonate to dissolve. Sometimes metal carbonates don't always dissolve super easily, but they'll get there. See, we still got this. Uh, it's hard to see. Maybe I tilt it. You can see there's still some solid on the bottom. It's dissolving. So I'll give that a minute. I'm going to read ahead in my directions. Um, it says add about 125 milliliters of the 0.2 molar calcium chloride solution. So at this point, we want to add set another solution to it, or calcium chloride. Um, so what this is going to do, according to your reaction number two on the front page, is when we add the calcium chloride to our, to our metal carbonate solution, our we're going to form a precipitate, a solid of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate does not dissolve. And then our metal is going to combine with the chloride, and it's actually, well, not going to combine, it's going to stay aqueous. So we know how much, um, or we will have a known substance at that point. We will have calcium and carbonate. Since the carbonate was attached to our metal, our mystery metal, we'll be able to figure out how much carbonate we actually have there. So this is almost all dissolved. We want to make sure all of it dissolves before we add these two things together. All of it dissolving. And you, don't, you could also have a stir rod here to help you out. Um, and we want to add about 125 milliliters of the calcium chloride. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that out. So here's our one, that's 120, so in between there. Again, this doesn't have to be super exact for this part. Um, we, the calcium chloride is going to be Is good. Um, our calcium chloride, actually, I'm going to go ahead and dump the rest of it in there. Don't have any left. Um, our calcium chloride is going to be an excess for this reaction, so we're going to have plenty to react with our metal carbonate. Check it, make sure we're all dissolved. All right. So we want to go ahead and add some in there. And you can instantly see, let's zoom in on our beaker here a little bit so you guys can see it nicely. See that it becomes really cloudy um, pretty quickly. As I add more, we get more and more cloudiness. So we have to have nice big beakers for this process because we have a lot of precipitate that forms. So all of that cloudiness is our precipitate. That is our calcium carbonate that we have formed. And we want to let that react, get all that precipitate made. And then we would want to let it sit. We want to let that sit for about uh, five minutes or so. Um, what that process will allow us to do is let the solid, the precipitate, settle a little bit towards the bottom. Um, 
and it'll also give us a chance to kind of set up for the next part. But we want to get it to settle towards the bottom, and I'll leave this going and kind of show you a few things while we wait. Um, so we want to let it settle and collect it. All right, the next part you can see is number 12 on your procedure. We would want to take a piece of filter paper. We want to weigh our filter paper. So here's my filter paper, a nice big circle of filter paper. Um, we're going to weigh it, find its mass, and record that mass in our data table. So I'm going to take my filter paper. We want to fold the filter paper in half like that. We want to fold it in half again. We did this in the beginning of the year when we did our filtration technique lab. Um, we have filtered things before, so that's another reason why I'm, I want to do this as a dry lab. We have experience doing this. It's just um, this is not one we have as much time for. All right, I grabbed a different filter paper. So we got our filter paper. We fold it up and open up one of the sides. Put it down in our funnel, squirt it with a little water so it sticks to the sides, and we want to make sure there's no bubbles on the sides, so it's good practice. Wet it a little bit more, and we wet it, make sure you're letting it stick to the sides, and a nice seal there. All right, and you can kind of look on the sides and make sure it's all sealed in. Sorry. Okay, so there's our funnel ready to go. Uh, I'm going to bring back one of our other pieces of equipment. Zoom out a little bit here. All right. So there's our ring stand back. We can set our funnel down in our ring. It has multiple uses, the ring. And put our beaker, our empty one, underneath. And then we're going to go through a process of filtering. So I'm going to show you just a little bit. Um, we would normally let our solution sit for a lot longer. Um, I might have used a bigger funnel, but I just didn't have one handy right now. And we would start filtering. And you can imagine to filter almost you know, 350 milliliters of liquid, it's going to take a while. So there's another reason why we're doing this as a dry lab for us. Um, so we would filter it. We would go through this process, we would collect all of the precipitate that's in here, so all that cloudy substance, all that white, is going to get stuck in our filter paper. Um, and we would be able to uh, dry out our filter paper at that point. So once it's all transferred, um, let's check our procedure. We would be at 16. Um, so you'd want to filter down till about 10 milliliters of this liquid is left over. And then it, when it's at 10 milliliters, um, we'd want to kind of swirl it around and let make sure all of that solid is kind of mixed up in the solution and then pour it in. So we're making sure we get all the solid. Then once this beaker is empty of all the contents, we would want to rinse it with some deionized water and pour the rinse in through our funnel too to make sure we get every single piece of that solid out of our beaker. We want all those products. Then we would um, we'd be at number 18. It says when all the solid has been transferred to the filter paper, um, take the filter paper out of the funnel and place it in the center of a watch glass. I did not grab a watch glass. Uh, let me grab that. Okay. All right, watch glass. So watch glass is just a piece of kind of concave glass. And so this is still dripping a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and take it out. Um, we're going to pretend like we filtered everything. We would take our filter paper out. And we would place it on our watch glass and let me do this on the counter. And we would carefully unfold it and we would have all of our solid in the middle there for us to um, look at. And I also have some bigger watch glasses that we would we could use. Um, at this point, we've got this wet filter paper. We've got a wet solid. We would want to dry it. So we'd have to be careful not to tear everything. Um, so on number 20, it says, allow the filter paper, or excuse me, number 19, it says we'd 
uh, place the watch glass with the filter paper in our drying oven and set it to 110 to 120 degrees Celsius. So we do actually have drying ovens, um, and well, I don't have I don't have a functioning drying oven, but they do exist, and you can put things in there and allow them to dry over a certain period of time. So we would do that, and then you'd let it dry in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Then we would remove our watch glass from the oven and using our tongs, or use tongs to remove it, so we'd be able to move it around using our tongs. Um, and then we'd, the calcium carbonate would be kind of chunky on here, so we'd want to break it up with a spatula and return it. So we'd open up kind of the center of it and allow any water that's trapped in the middle to escape from those chunks. Then we take this out of our drying oven, we set it to cool. Um, when it's cooled down, we take our weigh paper or our, our filter paper and we weigh the whole thing with our, the filter paper and the calcium carbonate on our balance. And then we record it in our data table. So we can see that in our data table as massive filter paper plus calcium carbonate. At that point, we would repeat our drying steps. So that would actually be steps. Um, Oh, it's mislabeled. It says 25 to 27. But our steps are actually um, 21. So we'd return it to the drying oven for another five minutes and then let it cool again. Um, and we would want to repeat that until the mass readings don't change by more than 0 0.005 grams. So you can see on our data table, we have a second wing and it dropped by just 0 0.001. So that was enough to make sure that all the water has a left for us. Um, so at that point, we would have all of our data that we would need for this. The calcium carbonate filter paper would go in the trash. Our liquid that was filtered out would also we could go down the drain at that point because it's um, our metal chloride. And those are all safe. Um, and remember, our metal chlorides are things like sodium chloride or potassium chloride or um, lithium chloride. So those are all fine. Um, and we would go on from there for our calculations. I hope that gave you a nice overview of the process and some of the equipment, what it looks like, what the lab, the um, chemicals would actually look like for this. And I'm sorry, we're not doing this slide on. I will show you this has settled for a few minutes now. So you can see it's a lot. We have a solution that's a lot clearer at the top, and then our solid is actually down at the bottom there. So if I was to pour out, pour out some of this liquid off the top, so a quite clear solution on the top, and then at the bottom we have all of our solid. So that's our precipitate that forms. So you can actually kind of separate those out pretty easily. All right, I hope that helps you get an idea of our lab.